There we go. Sarah, let us know who you are, what you do. Sure thing. Hi, guys. Sarah is my name. I work in sales. I've been in sales for 19 years. I love this profession. It's the best profession I will ever have. I will never change that. And I've been in sales ops roles. I've been in sales managers roles. And I have been selling throughout my entire career. So that's basically my background. Love it. Jacob. Uh, I'm, also, <clears throat> I'm also in sales operations. Uh, I've been doing it about 15 years now uh, in energy and consulting. Uh, same. It's it's a fantastic role. It fits my personality. I love data. Uh, so yeah, that's that's me. Beautiful. Amy. Yep. So I am Amy Quick. I'm a territory account manager with Fortinet. Um, and like you guys, I've been in sales the majority of my career going on. Gosh, I don't know that I want to say it, but 18 years this year. Um, <laughs> And I love it. I love the challenge that it presents. And I love the human component and the relationship side of things more than anything. So pleasure to be here this morning, Zineb. I'm looking forward to what you're presenting. So Jeff. Amazing. Yeah, pumped to be here. So my name is Jeff Risley. I'm the founder of the Sales Health Alliance. So I've also been in sales for just over 10 years now. And I run a company called Sales Health Alliance. It's all focused on helping salespeople improve their performance through better mental health and Prior to this, I was running a sales consulting company and working with startup companies here in Toronto, having them build out their process and giving them news with new ways to scale. So super pumped to be here as an ebb and hopefully uh, I can share some helpful insight on, uh, on what you're looking for. Beautiful. And uh, Patrick. This is a cool mix today, Amy. Great point. Um, Patrick Downs, King of Swing, the modern equivalent of the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. Uh, the modern day Rod Sterling, some would say as well, mostly me, but I am the co-host of the Customer Engagement Lab, where we pretend to talk about sales and mostly just joke about stuff. Today, I just chugged a ginger ale and threw up on camera, so you get that coming. Um, I also train salespeople and just recently moved over to a team lead role. So I think I know stuff about it, but we'll see. Yeah, you've been, you've been faking it how many years, Patrick? So long. Um, I forgot that I was faking it. And I was like, oh, I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zineb, um, the floor is yours. Uh, let us know how we can help you. I know, I know we, we got a bit of a sneak peek through email yesterday, but uh, tell us who you are, what you do, and how we can help today. Yeah, awesome. So I'll start with the uh, fun fact. Yeah, the t-shirt thing doesn't, doesn't count. I love to put cereal in my salad. So literally like the Kellogg's with the uh, chocolate... Uh, uh, chocolate covered, uh, yeah, uh, cereal. So, you know, it, every time people look at me like, eh, how did that actually work? Yeah. So I like the salty and sweet combination. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I do it. Yeah. Now I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it and report back. I think yeah, that's please the, do. <laughs> I think that's the second weirdest uh, combo I've heard. I had a professor in university that would put yellow mustard on his chocolate cake, which was no. the weirdest. No. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. It's actually it's a TikTok problem. challenge right now. Is is the yellow mustard on like uh, those like little chocolate spiral cakes or what? I can't remember what they're called. I eat so many of them. Anyways, I, it's like gone both ways though. 50 50 like gross or you know, bleh, and then a lot of people are like, oh, it's awesome. But anyways. Good for you, Zanette. Yeah. Way to, get, way to put yourself out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so I, I've been in marketing for, God, um, over 10 years. I think it's 12, 13 years now. I've uh, been running my own marketing consultancy for the past four to five years. And I am, I am a generalist, right? So just to give you a little bit of background, I'm a generalist. And what I did find in the market is that um, most of my clients came through word of mouth. So when it was time for me to actually take control and build some sort of a predictable uh, machine, right? Um, I had to make a few changes. So if I put for, if I put, uh, you know, my, my first foot forward is generalist, I'll do anything the message doesn't quite land, right? So the exercise that I had to do was really like focus on what is the value that I'm giving and then, you know, over deliver because I'm a generalist, I can, you know, that's that's in the in the how and uh, the, the end result, that's in the how I do it, right? So that's just to give you a little bit of context um, uh, of, of my background. And right now I'm just relaunching my, my website, which I don't know if you actually saw that. It's just, it, it says, yeah, 
yeah, it says under construction. And I really wanted to share, you know, I'll, I'll just share my screen um, of my Wix draft. There, you know, it's, I'm trying, I'm having like loads of conversations and I think this, this one is really gonna help me because I'm trying to remove the fluff as much as possible. So I'm having loads of conversations with, uh, with uh, startup uh, marketers and founders that have hired um, you know, either my competition or um, have used an alternative, et cetera, just to sort of keep, well, eating my, eat my own dog food to start out with, right? Um, and what I'm, I'm really focusing on helping tech startups learn from their customers so they can figure out what actually works, double down on that versus what they're currently doing, which is, you know, having that feeling of constantly making stuff up. Uh, there's lots of guessing. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, um, I'm super passionate about that. And um, in terms of how I do it, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of, um, I already have it built a, a package that they could just, you know, buy on my website, which show the, shows them exactly how to run the interviews, how to set them up, how to make sense of all that, etc. And then the next package is, okay, you get that package plus a couple of hours of my time. Because, I mean, to, you can find loads of websites uh, to download the, the how to run, you know, jobs to be done uh, interviews. Where I come in, like, why, why, why me is my ability to actually connect stuff, right? So that's, I don't care if they buy it here or there. But if you want to come to me to help you make sense of that stuff, um, uh, then that's that's an option. Yeah. So I have, one. I, I have a bunch of questions. Yeah, go ahead. No, you first. You first. You first. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So Sinab, I've been working. I worked at an agency before where we did buyer persona work and stuff like that. So my first question to you, because you said tech startups, who is your buyer persona? Who are you targeting? Like individual roles? Who do you want to talk to in that company? Okay. Um, uh, founders and marketers so i'm still in the you know i have to i have to pick one because i'm I, i'd like to i've been targeting the the recently funded uh early stage startups their first yeah. um, um their first fundraising round so that's ideally uh that's what it would be so generally right, because you are in the in the beginning of the phase, it needs to be the founders because they're doing everything anyway. So they would make the decisions and they would need the support that you could offer. I love the scalability, by the way, of them sort of buying something on your and then expanding to to you, putting together the pieces. Once they realize now we know all this stuff, what the hell are we going to do with it? And then you can sort of guide them. It's a really good concept. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That, that was my question. I was just going to say, who's your... Like who's that that person? Because I think uh, you know, Sarah basically said it right. Like your ICP, I guess. Like, like tech startups is big, and then who within that tech startup? And then do you think? Do you think? And I'd love to hear other folks' uh, thoughts on this. Like, do you think you need to narrow it down a little bit more? Because even if you're a founder of a tech startup, I don't know. There's probably ten thousand of those. Like maybe in a vertical or a certain size or a certain series of funding or, you know what I mean? Because I think. That could that could help because then then the the messaging of the talk track could be even more specific. Like we know you're you know at this stage and you're going to have these three problems. But I don't know. I mean, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I um, I, I think it, I think it's important to test. Like I think you could like try both. Um, I this is my first time being on, at one of these, so I actually did take a look at your website before Cineb, and uh, I did a couple extra minutes this morning, so I like mocked up a couple things that I can show with you, show you later on the, later on the call, which, which I think could be, could be helpful. Um, Cause yeah, I think it's, um, I think they're just based on how you position your product. Like, I think you, you are tackling like a problem that a lot of founders, like founders that I've worked with previously have had this issue for sure. Um, but just like tightening up the messaging might be enough to allow yourself to cast that wide net. So after you go through your thing, I can kind of show you something that I mocked up. Um, I was, I'd be curious to learn as maybe before, if someone else wants to jump in before, or, or if this is a good next step, I'd be really curious to know based on the messaging that you have on your website, like the let customers pull marketing out of you. I'd really love to learn 
what do you like about this messaging? What's, what are you trying to kind of, what type of emotion are you trying to create when someone looks at that page? Um, so they take that next step. I appreciate all this. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, Jeff gets like bonus points. I don't know if anybody's gone ahead and done a mock-up. He did like to... master homework, like Jesus took it to, the, to the next level. Yeah, and you know what, to add to Jeff's point, um, uh, you said something at the very beginning, which I'm just going to kind of go back to you where you said, I, 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 I'm, I'm eating my own dog food. And the minute you said that, I was like, oh, that's an awesome line, especially to describe exactly what it is that you're doing, because you're going to be taking that to other organizations and forcing, not forcing them, but encouraging them to do the same thing through the utilization of the service and in, in your offering. Um, so I kind of, in my brain that immediately stood out to me as like a really cool kind of line to describe like, you know, what a lot of us really ought to be doing. Because we do have a lot of people come on here that are in the initial stages of like a developing a product. And they're really excited about their product and everything that they have to offer, but they haven't necessarily taken the time to kind of stand it back and say, okay, well, who would actually buy it? How does it help them? Um, and what would they be saying about the pains and, and everything that they would be experiencing surrounding this particular issue that I could, you know, potentially solve for them. So uh, kudos to you, because I think that that um, right there, like kind of building on that premise is going to be a, a big deal because it was, it was a very, I don't know, like eye-opening line. So I'm, I'm excited for this one. Awesome. Uh, Francois, I don't, I don't really know. I would say this is my first time. I don't really know if I can comment every time someone gives Absolutely, up. Absolutely, yeah, uh, totally. It's, it's very free flow, right? So if you feel kind of like, yeah. you know, just let's make it conversational. But if you say, hey, I want to share my screen and then start getting feedback, or if you want to jump right to, uh, let let's see what Jeff has mocked up. Like we can go that mm -hmm. way. So it's it's really uh, there's no like structured format. It's it's kind of okay. working for you, right? So I think right now we're just giving you inline feedback. But if you now want to kind of go, okay, well, let's take some of these ideas and like iterate or get feedback right on them. Yeah, yeah, no, awesome. I, I, just a couple of things. So uh, Francois and uh, Sarah, I think you, yeah, you you asked me about the uh, the ICP. Um, so I do, you know, going back to the whole eating my dog uh, own dog food. I know that you know when it's clear who you're talking to it's much easier, right? The, the big challenge I have is that, to me, I've, I've always worked with uh, early stage um, startups and the, the, most of the business I used to have was most of it, right? Because I've worked with bigger companies, but most of it was um, with bootstrapped uh, uh, startups, which was a headache in terms of, you know, making, you know, you know the whole, the whole, money right thing so i'm like why am i making this this tough for myself i know this stuff works let me just redefine no move around a couple of boxes and uh and, and not have price be an issue anymore right it's more about value right and if you can't pay it well then you know you can't pay it um i'd be glad to recommend someone um that you know they can they can help you at that that price point um so today the idea of focusing on, so just going one level up, going to the recently funded um, uh, early stage startups, the ones that got their first funding round, so the very first one, it instantly in my head, it just makes things easier. I'm not really big on outbound, um, not yet, but it makes things easier because I, I can think, okay, where are they? Crunch base. How can I get a list? Okay, crunch base. Boom. No, it just, it's easier to, they're easier to find. It's now, a good prospect base. It's a good prospect yeah. base. Really appreciate exactly. that a lot. I think that's really good point. And I think one of the things that often happens when you take your first funding is that you're going to put a bunch of money into marketing. So why not make that money count, right? Because yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so initially I had built, so this idea of raise the runway, um, I had built it uh, around the idea of, okay, so now um, you just got your first uh, funding round. You can't be doing, you know, you can't be guessing anymore because at the end of the month, you have to deliver results to someone, right? To, to an investor. So it's, it's uh, you need to get your, your shit together. Can, can we swear here? 
Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, totally okay. <laughs> <laughs> too late, too late, too late. <laughs> so yeah, you, you have to get your shit together. And um, and I'm not saying, you know, there are no silver bullets, but this is this is as close as it gets to a silver bullet, right? Um, okay. Yeah. So um, great point. And, I, Oh, go, go ahead. I think I think you make like a, a good point. Like I think like the like targeting that kind of like first early stage startup that's just received its first round of funding. I think my perspective is like kind of like the biggest challenge when you get that first round of funding is a lot of these companies haven't necessarily found product market fit yet or scalable product market fit yet. So I think that's like a really important point to touch on during all this. So if, if you're okay with it, I can, I can share my screen with you if, if that's okay. And yeah, let's just do, it. Show you. do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and while you're doing that, um, Amy, you mentioned eating my own uh, dog food and there is, you know, it's not in the version that I will show you, but uh, you know, doing a lot more video to show more, to tell more about, you know, the, um, the story of, of how I even built this website, you know, that's, I would love to do that. And be like this set this sentence yeah. came from a customer interview for example like it that's keeps just, it yeah. real it really does keep it real and you know I'll, I'll i'll make a note later once we see um you know jeff's presentation here all right wait is it jeff or jacob i lost it, my yeah, it's jeff <laughs> okay um but I, I wrote something down that i think will um make sense it's kind of like the eating your own dog food concept but extend it out a little bit okay. Wait, let's, let's, just a quick comment, Jeff. This is, I think, um, Patrick or Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, our first uh, pitching of, like, it's like Inception. It's like five on Friday. So Jeff is pitching his idea to Zineb, who's, who's <laughs> and there may be, I know you're not selling anything, Jeff, but I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. yeah it's some I'd, I'd like, I'd like 30 minutes this morning and I was like kind of thinking about it and it's like, I was like, yeah, like, well, why not? Like this, uh, I, I love doing this. I was, again, I haven't had time to kind of flex these types of muscles in a while because it's all been focused on kind of the mental health piece. And I really enjoy, I really enjoy this stuff. So hopefully, I uh, hope this helps. But um, so yeah, when, when Thanks, I look at, yeah, yeah. Um, and again, if you don't like any of it, that's totally cool. Um, so when I looked at this page, um, I was trying to come at it as like objectively as possible. And I was having a tough time. I didn't really understand the let customers pull marketing, marketing out of you. If I was just kind of looking at this as like a quick glance, I wasn't sure what that statement really means. And I think that you touch on some of those things where it's just like the guesswork and the money is, is, is important. Uh, obviously, that's not something that people consider. But I think what's miss missing here is sort of the emotional like component of this like what is kind of like the emotion that you're trying to elicit that's going to act, get them motivated to take that next step because emotion is going to be the thing that motivates them to take the next step and i also thought the connect on linkedin i thought we could kind of improve that a little a little more just because that connect on linkedin i'm like what does that what's that what what does that mean so this is this is the kind of my draft the of how i would kind of structure it a little bit more um I typically like starting with questions that will elicit that kind of response and something that I've kind of experienced with the founders that I've worked with is people can really connect with that kind of running out of runway. It kind of aligns with your brand, but running out of runway is a really stressful experience that a lot of founders are dealing with on an ongoing basis. And something that all of these startup founders, founders really want to achieve is they want to achieve that product market fit that's scalable. That's where that kind of, that's where a lot of doors open up. So that's where kind of like two things that I was trying to elicit as this, with this landing page, it's like that running out of runway, that stress that you feel when you kind of are running out of runway, but then that risk of never achieving that product market fit. Um, so you want to get back to kind of what you're actually solving, which is that like stop guessing and start converting more customers. And you kind of leave it up in the air where you're kind of sparking that curiosity as well, where you're just like, okay, like I do want product market fit. I am running out of runway, so I should probably do something here. I should probably click see more to see what happens. And then on the next page, like that's like your landing page, how I would structure it as kind of then like a short video, whether it's animated, whether it's yourself, you could even like record something through Vidyard so you can track this where you kind of do like a two minute video, like the first 40 seconds is like sharing a story. It sounds like you've been in this space for a long time, you get it. So share stories about what it feels like to be running out of runway 
and how stressful it is. And then share 40 seconds about, you know, what's that, what's that future dream look like of when you actually hit scalable revenue, what does that look like? And how does that make you feel? So you're showing like the before and after picture. And then you kind of close that off by saying, like, this is how I'm going to help you through the different strategies that I'm kind of positioning in this online course, which then you can have kind of the takeaways. Um, I wasn't sure what the kind of next step would be, but you could have direct, you could test it by directing it straight to purchasing your product to see what the conversion rate was like. You could test it by having book a 15 minute call so that I can kind of like explain what it is, or you could just have them download like a free resource, whether it's a one, one or two pager so that you are capturing those emails for everyone that's going through this process. And you'd be able to track to see which one's converting better. Is it, do can calls convert better? Do read downloading your resource convert better? Or are you getting enough people that are actually converting and buying your product right away through this landing page video to convert based on the price point? It'll kind of depend on if there's enough there. Um, you might need a call if it's kind of a higher price point. Um, that's kind of, kind of how my thoughts, my takeaways on it. Um, I also kind of drafted up this one as well. Do you actually know why your customers buy your product? I don't think it's as kind of like powerful as kind of eliciting that, you know, are you running out of runway? Yes or no. Like if the answer is yes, you should probably click see more. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's all I got. It was just very short and sweet. So um, I'll take my, uh, take myself off screen share and yeah, I'd love to kind of, hopefully some of that resonated or if there's some takeaways for you there, I can share this with you too. So you don't have to kind of record it. Way ahead of you. I took screenshots. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, and we recorded this too, so all this will get shared afterwards as well. So, but that was amazing. I, I like the, yeah. the so so a, a couple of pieces of feedback there. I like the the question piece, right? Because it's kind of how do you kind of emotionally draw someone in, and then I think the show me how um, is is great in terms of like kind of that call to action. And that and then I'd be curious, Zineb, maybe what you'd want to build out because I think what I find is if if you can provide something like a package, like. I think people are going to want to know what's a cost. So, you know, what I know you can have a raging debate on whether like gold, silver, bronze is a good idea or just one package. But I think people are going to, if you like, if, if you show them, like Jeff said, Hey, here's kind of the things I'll take you through. And then they're interested. You want them to be able to transact at the end, even if it's, I don't know, a first paid engagement, because I think you can, you can die a death by a thousand cuts of those initial discovery calls. Like they, they might just basically use your, um, like abuse the free advice you could give in a 30 minute discovery. They could, they could do 50 of those. Yeah, that's a great, great point. Um, Jeff, <clears throat> I, I love, you know, before, before I, I share uh, the screen, absolutely. You know, the first thing that, that I get from what you, and first of all, thank you, that, that I get from what you just shared is, you know, even if it's a, um, until until I you know I can actually upload the publish the final version, you know I should take care of that call to action. So mm -hmm. that's that was the first thing that that and and that's I mean it doesn't need to necessarily lead to a video, but at least you know the call to action should be something else, not just you know connected to the actual value. And the video idea is actually uh, a really a really good idea because that's not that's not that hard to do. I'm thinking of doing a lot more video to, to show who I am, you know, with my mm. sense of humor, the, the way I talk, etc. cetera. Um, but even before then, I think it's, it's a, a really great idea to, to link to a, a video. So well, that, that, absolutely. That, you, should make how, a you should make a t like three different t-shirts for the different phases of your video. <laughs> I think that one needs awesome. to be you eating like, like not for real dog food, <laughs> like maybe like pot roast or something that represents dog food. <laughs> But I really oh my God. love that. You should do a whole series on that. Go ahead, Jeff. Sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, no, I think uh, like the, the video, like that kind of flow is like really, it, I've seen it work really well, um, especially like if you kind of start off with kind of connecting. So when, I, when I'm talking to people about kind of my product, which is like mental health and sales and like building resilience and things like that, like I start every single pitch that I have with a client sharing my story to kind of just show that I get it, like to show that I've lived it. I've been through panic attacks, anxiety, and all these things. And it totally shuts off that kind of like 
st that stress response and that kind of thing of like, holy, sh holy shit, this guy's being like really vulnerable. And I just met him like, what's going on here? And it kind of builds that connection right away. And I think you can do something similar because you've lived and worked in it. You can kind of connect with that running out of that stressor of running out of time and running out of runway very, very well. So think about how you can kind of work that into your story to make yourself really relatable to be like, wow, this person does get it. Like they do eat their own dog food. Like how do I kind of like leverage their expertise to make my business better? And if you can get that video up and running and it's converting, then you're all set. You got that sweet, sweet passive income where rather than having to cold call people or do this outbound, you can essentially set up a really nice marketing engine where if your products like, you know, let's say your products, I don't know, call it like hundred bucks to, to kind of buy, mm -hmm. buy the product. And you get it to a point where you're running ads and you find out that through Facebook ads and Instagram ads or whatever, that conversion rate to get the customer, like a customer to buy is call it like $20 per customer. That means you're making $80 profit on every single kind of conversion. So you can just start ramping up that marketing where you're spending enough on ads, knowing that a certain portion is going, going to convert at $20 and you're still going to be making this like I said, the sweet, sweet passive income. And then mm -hmm. you don't need to worry too much. And then you can start thinking about more high-end products, maybe like one-on-one -on -one coaching or personalization that you can kind of build on top of this foundational piece that's just going to nicely build and grow revenue for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, this is the first time I'm actually <clears throat> thinking of packaging something on a website and, and that, it, that, uh, that they can buy on the website. So this is super exciting to actually be able to do it myself. I, I had already, I ran a, a clarity challenge um, a, f a few weeks ago, over, over a month ago. So I had to, I built it, right? So there's this guide, step-by-step -step guide. I don't have to do all that with everything, the email scripts, uh, everything. So that I'm gonna be selling on, on, on the website and then, uh, on top of that, if they want a few hours of my time, then you know, let's let's chat. Um, and of course, if they've if they've got their own knowledge from anywhere else, um, good for them. Uh, if they want help, you know, with with connecting stuff, um, yeah, awesome. I thought about can I just come up with an input on what Francois said? So basically, the thing about wasting time because this is very common when you sort of offer consultancy services and some sort of package that you can buy online that we're talking about now. So I would I would structure it away. So if they convert for a discovery call, I would structure it in a way where you're giving away like a light analysis of their stage where they are. And you would have like the video and then just the type form beneath with a bunch of questions. So you get a lot of information before, but because in some cases you could just disqualify them. They're not, they're not going to buy from you. They're going to spend that half an hour just talking. You're going to listen. You're going to tell them a bit more about your insights, about where they are. And then you're going to end the conversation because this can be a huge time waste as Francois was talking about. So I would do a, do a type form as a sort of discovery form where they fill out their data before they take your time. And in some cases, I do this for myself when it comes to first meetings. In some cases, I just come back and I say, hey, sorry, you guys, you're not a, you're not a match for our company. Mm -hmm. So we should not waste this time uh, on each other. So you can actually sort of take that away because you're one person, right? Yeah. 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 So time is I do have the people essence for you. Yeah, I have people in my value matrix, but yeah, it's just me. Yeah. Right. So then you need to be careful about your time. So that's just a yeah. tip. Jacob, yeah. go for it. Yeah. No, I mean, this all sounds amazing, Jeff. I mean, I, I really like what Jeff was doing with, you know, kind of tying back the, the title of the site, Raise the Runway, and using that word again. Um, I'm, I'm pretty new to the, to, the, uh, to the startup space. Most of my time has, has been spent in sort of more mature businesses. But that, you know, in, in professional services, kind of what we've seen over a number of years is that typically the buyer's journey in professional services is, is it's a weird acronym, but it's U-R-C-T. It's sort of, you start with understanding, you want to you know, demonstrate that you understand um, your, your potential client. You want to create that relevant content for them. And then, you know, at that point, now you can sort of add in your own credibility and then you're trying to get to that trust, that trusted advisor sort of, sort of step. That's where most of the, the really profitable services start to come in is once you're at that trusted advisor stage. So, I mean, I, I know that I know that you're probably wanting to share your screen soon and, and show us the website that you're walking through, but, you know, just sort of kind of having that structure, you know, where you start with understanding, you, you move into that relevancy, and then, you know, getting the credibility. I think, you know, what Jeff did in terms of uh, 
uh, having that video leading with that vulnerability that that sort of follows that 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 stepwise you know act pretty well. So sweet, thank you, Jacob. Thank you. I could I never get enough of this of this stuff, you know. <laughs> but well, I think just to dovetail on that, um, that's an interesting uh, acronym. But I, I agree. I mean, I, I would say most of what I'm selling as well as professional services. So understanding the problem because sometimes they don't know what they don't know. They think this is the problem. Um, and then the relevancy, I think, you know, the messaging, but I think the credibility is interesting. And so I wonder if almost sharing an example and, you know, you may or may not have use cases, but like, so you had like, um, Jeff had that call to action show me now, but I think almost like maybe a, a section below where you, you lay it out, like maybe it's a, let's call it a three-step process. So one, two, three, like kind of paint that picture or that journey that they might be going on. So one is, you know, we'll have a discovery Two, I'll do here's these bullet points and three, maybe the results. Cause mm -hmm. I think if they can really understand exactly like, what am I getting? And I don't think you're like giving away all the candy in the, in the, what's the saying in the, in the lobby, um, spilling the candy in the lobby. Like, I, cause I think people want to, they want to understand what am I going to be getting, but you know, you bring them close enough that they still need to, to reach out to you. I got that. Yeah. Who's going to correct me? Thank you. That? That state uh -huh. is it spilling the the candy in the lobby? It's Jen? as beautiful <laughs> as your shirt. I just envision candy being spilled, and that's what your shirt is. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think I think kind of just adding this, maybe just repeating sort of the same thing that you said. But it's it where I found things work really well. It's like connecting to say like here you are now. Here's the stressors. I get the stressors you're under. Here's where you're trying to go. The like dream of what you want to be because that the future goal that everyone's working towards and the biggest piece that you need to kind of then wrap up this story with is like here's how i'm going to get you from this uncomfortable situation that you're that you're in now to this very comfortable situation in the future and here's how i'm going to do it and you kind of tease a little bit more and how they're going to do it is by this online package or whatever you're putting together and what you're trying to sell so it's kind of where you are now uncomfort uncomfortable anxiety fear running out of money here's where you're trying to go scalable predictable revenue where you're growing your teams and you're not having vcs breathing down your neck and here's how i'm going to get you there so it's kind of having that kind of storytelling piece in in, in play mm -hmm. awesome agree awesome should i go ahead and, and and share yeah go for it yep the screen okay yeah. Awesome. So you're going to say swear, but you can do both. I know. <laughs> no. no more swearing. I got two in. No more. Um, okay. This is building in public, huh? This is literally building in public. This, this is like the definition of it. Yeah. So let me just hit preview. There we go. Okay. So this is very, very much draft, draft mode. Um, so um working um i think yeah it, jeff you you mentioned um you know sort of getting emotion so this is this is my latest attempt to getting uh emotion uh feel like you're constantly making stuff up in marketing um not sure if this is you know going to be like the best and forget about the design uh you know this is just like i'm, I'm really interested in in the in the message uh, so, sorry, um, one, one, one note to think about and uh, another thing that you might want to kind of like mm -hmm. el elicit a kind of like a response is you could even ask if you are tar targeting those companies that have just raised, um, raised their first round, you could have mm -hmm. a, a power question like, do you feel like pressure from VCs breathing down your neck to, to scale rapidly? Mm -hmm like something around like that kind of pain point, you can test it, right? You can have all sorts of different landing pages test, testing this, but I know that's something that a lot of like first time founders feel is they just raised capital. They've never worked with a VC before. They've kind of had their mom and pop shop and they've kind of been grown bootstrapping and all of a sudden they have this like new set of responsibilities with VCs on top of them. Like that's, that's a lot, a lot of pressure that a lot of them aren't necessarily ready for or have experienced before. So connecting to that kind of pain might be something, another thing to explore. Yeah, and I, I would, I would agree with him as well there, because I think this is, if you, if you do a power question like that, you are going to disqualify everyone who is not in that situation, which is a good thing at this point. 
Like you would be targeting and talking to only the right people because this I could convert on. Like many people in this room could convert on this and they would not, it would not be directed specifically towards the, the, the companies that you are trying to target. Feel like you're constantly making stuff up in marketing. It doesn't really relate in my mind to a specific scenario where you just got funded for the first time. Yeah, and what I'm going to say to that is, you know, what everyone says, because everyone can relate to this. Even solopreneurs yes. can relate to this, right? <laughs> yes. But, right, that's what you say. You can't say, uh, I can't be selling to everyone, right? That's lesson number one. Basically, yes. Yes, basically, <laughs> yes. Try to thin it down as much as you can, because that yeah. question Jeff mentioned is going to be so much more powerful for the people who just got their funded who are having VCs yeah. breathing down their neck. Like they're going to feel like, oh yeah, that hurts, man. And then they're going to engage in a different way. At least that's my sort of take on it. Hmm. One question, and I guess it's for the group. Um, I know we don't have enough hours in, in this call to debate sales versus marketing. Um, but I think <laughs> like one, one way I've had it framed is like marketing and sales is really about ultimately like revenue generation. And I wonder if, if instead of, saying marketing. And the reason I'm thinking this in Eb is sometimes people might kind of they, like selling is very clear. I think some people are like, okay, selling is going to equal like dollars in the bank. Whereas marketing for some people is kind of vague. Like it can be so many things. So what if your messaging was more about driving revenue? Cause that's yeah. ultimately what it is, right? Like I love the analogy of, you know, marketing is the flyer in the mail and selling is the person knocking on your door with, with the flyer saying, hey, did you get this? Let's do something about it. And so although you are saying it's marketing, ultimately you wanna help them drive revenue. I think it's very interconnected. I completely agree. I think you are, you know, you're running your business. So you're obviously gonna be concerned on a very, very high level with revenue generation, um, but your customers are also concerned with revenue generation. I mean, ultimately that's what it ties back to. That's gonna be, the big, you know, I can help you make more money. And they, because they have to take the money that they've been given by their, you know, all that, all the funding that they've received and they have to turn around and they have to convert that. Um, they may not have to convert it in series A, you know, but they're going to have to start converting that to profit within, you know, a three-year period or one, you know, whatever they, whatever terms they've agreed to with their investors. And I think that's, that's the key right there is you've got to kind of put your sales hat on too and, and argue from the perspective of how marketing can increase revenue. But I, I made a note at the very beginning, and this is something that you can see, um, it doesn't matter if you are a newer startup that maybe you've been around for a couple series of funding and you're starting to gain momentum or you're, you know, you're a corporation, you've been around for a few years, you have a solid sales program. The problem is, if you haven't nailed your marketing almost right from the beginning, it, became, it becomes a much larger monster that you have to deal with at some point in time down the road. Um, and I'll give you a prime example. A company I worked for before was a startup, but they were 10 years old, okay? And by the time I got to them, we were working with these PowerPoint decks, which were their main kind of marketing. I mean, that's what I used on all my sales calls, which marketing created, and they were horrible, okay? And I was like, I cannot use these. They were wordy and verbose and boring and just, ugh, you know, and I argued constantly about, you know, the fact that we needed to use our customer's language a little bit more. They needed to be less wordy and verbose, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. And that's kind of the story of the relationship between sales and marketing sometimes is kind of getting that fine line and getting that all uh, baked into a nice, pretty cake. Um, but it was such a big problem because they had so much content they created for marketing and they couldn't possibly go back and recreate all that content and, and make it nice and pretty because that meant a lot of hours devoted to it, which was going to take time and money. So we just kind of kept going as is. And it was like never a problem really got solved that would have helped them to generate more revenue because they could have gotten the message across a lot more explicitly and efficiently. So I think that's something that you need to build into your marketing is it's a beast that has to be slayed. And the longer and the, the bigger and bigger and bigger it gets, the more expensive it will be for them to tackle it later. 
And that's, that, that's the case across the board. Um, so I put that the sooner you nail marketing using your customer's lingo, because that's what it's ultimately gonna boil down to, the better. Otherwise you'll be reverse engineering um, unemotional decks and messaging that doesn't resonate, definitely not re generating any revenue. And that is gonna be something I think that'll appeal from a, from, a, from a revenue standpoint with these startups. So I think you need to roll that into your messaging somewhere. I don't know exactly how, cause I'm not the, the marketer in the bunch, but I, I don't think that you should try to hide from the fact that one of your chief goals is gonna to be to help them generate more revenue and, and what that looks like, what the roadmap to that would look like. Awesome, yeah. Spot on. Hmm. Thank you. Maybe get them to share some ugly marketing content with you too. You know, like I've eating seen, your I've dog food. Like, like I've, I've maybe come up, come up with examples of like what doesn't work, you know? And uh, God, there's, I can't, there's so many salespeople out there that would be like, <laughs> remove my company logo, but here, use this. And this is why it sucks. Do you know who, who's done a good job? I don't know if anyone else has seen this is Bilal. Um, I'll get his last name butchered, but yeah. And yeah. He, has, has, hasn't he done that where he like cherry picks like bad marketing? Yes. He'll go to a website and he'll be like, hey, this is what I would do different. And customers have sometimes used it. Sometimes they haven't, like I know some big ones have used it, not credited him, but they've clearly absolutely taken his feedback because the messaging on their website was like, what, I don't even know what this company does. Anyway. <laughs> Jeff, I don't know if you were going to chime in there. Yeah, yeah. I think just sort of building off Amy's point, I, I think it's come up a few times. I think the one of the biggest like words that needs to be kind of up here at some point is like that like product market fit. Like a lot of founders will kind of understand product market fit and building off of what Amy said, like marketing is, it's like lighting your money on fire. If you try to market, you don't have product market fit. You may like, it's like, it's just not, a good strategy and if you have like a salesperson like salespersons or salespeople are supposed to be there to experiment test figure out what that product market fit looks like to then hand it off to marketing to kind of ramp it up um yeah i think that's a good i think i also like francois's point about kind of revenue generating rather than trying to go marketing or sales i think revenue generation is kind of a good catch-all which would resonate um yeah the big one for me would be just finding a way to fit in product market fit so I can I ask you, Jeff, clear. since you, yeah, since you've been such a sort of, you have, you feels like you have an idea about the scenarios where you don't get product market fit and what happens then. Do you have any guess on, and again, guesswork, but do you have any guess on how many uh, companies fail because they can't sort of survive because they don't get product market fit and because of that, they can't sell, they can't market and then they just like go under. Does anyone know? I don't, I don't know what the exact sort of number is, but it's like, I worked at a, like, it's just, honestly, it's just, I worked at a company called crowd babble where we are always chasing product market fit and why it's so challenging is like, for, I guess one of the main challenges is you're like in a situation where let's say you have a technology and there's like three or four other kind of companies in the same space that are kind of like op like building a similar type of technology at the same time it's like each one of those companies will kind of show that they've gotten their first few customers apologies for the, the background noise with my girlfriend on the phone but um they'll get their first bit of they'll get the first companies they'll kind of show go to a vc say hey like here look we've converted our customers here's what we expect here's our business plan here's money so if like three or four of these similar types of companies get funding all at the same time then it's like you're off to the races with each company trying to figure out how to maximize their messaging to get product market fit to win out and beat all the other ones. This is a race in this competition. And if you're stuck and you don't know what your customers are saying, or you don't understand to a T how and why your customers are buying your product versus the other ones in the market, you are like totally screwed. You're going to waste resources. Mm -hmm. You might panic and but say, okay, well, I'm going to hire this really expensive VP of sales from another company because he's done it before to solve my problems. Yeah. That, does, that doesn't work. You're not going to mm. be able, you're not going to have the resource to invest into a really good tech stack to start automating some of these processes. There's all of these friction starts to build up because you're operating under pressure from the VC pressure to compete with the other, like win out and compete, beat the other competitors in the market. 
all the while no one's ever stopped to do exactly what you're telling them they should do, which is the right move, which is pause, go to those first 20 customers that you closed and do a deep dive into why they actually bought from you in the first place, what's changed in their lives, how is that resonating, how are you making their lives different, and then reinvesting that really important knowledge into your marketing, into your sales and, rev and, and sales process to generate more of this revenue. So like I said, I think you're, you have like, the service that you offer, assuming that it works, is like a really powerful thing, but it's like connecting to these pressures and these stressors that these founders are under is going to be a key part in getting them to take that next step. And whoever's so involved in their sales process too. Like if it's not the founder actively selling, they have a small sales team, um, kind of empowering them to go out and do that homework. Because my job as a, as a territory account manager is to sell something and then I'm not really as involved in the post-sales stuff, right? They've gotten a product, whatever, it's on the shelf. However, I disagree with that. And I'm involved all the way through um, so far as escalating support tickets. I mean, whatever they need on the outset of purchasing product. So if I go back to a customer and say, hey, how's it going? You know, what, what, what did you like about the experience? What did you not like? What are some features that are missing or whatever? It comes across as a lot more... Um, you know, I guess I'm trying to think of the word. It, it's more like, okay, I, I actually really want to know, right? I really want to help yeah, you engage. forward. Yeah, engaged, right. But if it was like someone that they don't really know kind of coming in and doing this post-market, post-purchase research, they might be a little bit like, ugh, you know, I don't have time for that. And they will, they'll sometimes say that, you know? So I think engaging those founders to really engage their whoever is handling sales for them too to get involved more with post sales with those customers is going to be vital for your research and also for them to really build out you know their thoughts and feelings on a particular product or solution and and what their customers are saying even post sales that's huge too so i agree completely with what jeff's saying i'm i mean this conversation is such an interesting one because we are i'm in the startup right now and I, I'm head of sales, so we're working to get our first investment, hopefully during this year or maybe in the quarter of next year, like in the beginning of next year. And we are looking at all of these things right now from the specific perspective of being in that space. And that's what I was, why I was wondering, like how many are in the race? Like I know our competitors from a technical perspective, uh, but I was just curious to how many actually lose this out. So let's say the messaging could be something like, do you want to be one out of four startups that survives your first two years of funding. <laughs> like you could, you could really use that sort of, uh, either there's a big gain here or there's a really big fear that you're gonna be three of four that just loses control and damage control and then they're out. Like it's, it's a good message, I think. What do you guys think about that? I, I'm, I'm thinking of a visual thing. Uh, I'm a very visual person and I'm, I'm looking at the screen right now and I'm wondering if, how, how you could, and I'm going to think about this in because like Jeff, I, I find this stuff really interesting. So I'll, I'll be firing a few things your way um, later today and on the weekend. Cause I, I like this stuff. It's like when it's not, I don't know if anybody else has this, but it was when it's not your problem to solve you, you <laughs> it from a totally different lens um, and it's fun, but like, I don't think fish in the sea is the right thing, but I'm thinking like a, a visual where you, you kind of have the, the dot we'll call it of this startup. And then almost either it's a statistic, but basically showing like, look, you know, the, these people have clear messaging and they're having success. These ones aren't and <laughs> they're dying or whatever it is, they're failing, right? Um, I think if, you know, you, you want to highlight that this is what you want to be. You want to be this, this fish or whatever it is, the dot that's surviving. Um, mm -hmm. and so th those are some ideas that are bouncing around uh, up here. Um, I, I, think, I think those are all like really compelling ways to tell a story and i think that's where um like i think I, I do like the 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 analytic the data point that you you said sarah and i like i, I can picture that visual as well kind of like the c and kind of like the ones that are, th are thriving i think that's where that video could be really powerful how do you kind of weave some of those like visual aspects into that so again i don't think we should be thinking about how do we convert into a sale here, it's how do you convert them into taking that next step where you can capture their attention for two to three minutes and execute that kind of video or that storytelling where you kind of have that more kind of, that, that, that piece. That, that I like the, using the runway to like 
creating some content surrounding that, um, you know, whether it's a picture of this sounds really silly, but like a model walking down a runway with a present and then that present unwraps and it's, you know, something, um, I don't know, so something like that to kind of, uh, for more brand awareness, but, um, it's, it's, it's because it's an interesting brand, you know, raise the runway.co. When I first see that too, I think it's some sort of clothing fashion brand or something like that. Um, but that's not, not necessarily a bad thing. Right. Cause I was like, Oh, what's this going to be about? Are we going to see, like, what are we going to see? Um, and I think that you could use that to your advantage and build out this brand. Like you are the runway for the marketing world, right? You're going to deliver this like extremely succinct and on point messaging for your customers. So uh, something, something there too, that you could put on your website that kind of just brings it all together. Um, like just like a video. Um, and I think you gotta have some fun with this too. You know, I mean, we're all serious in business, right? But we're really not. And um, I think that this is, a pin, my opinion, you could make this a little bit more interactive and fun. Uh, and I think that you would be totally safe. You're not going to like turn people off. Like Sarah mentioned uh, the thing about the comment of like the, to, like the shit, like let's get your shit together on the first page. And uh, I was like, well, you know, it's some people might be a little turned off by that, but some people will be like, oh, she's going for it. You know, she's grabbing the bull by the horns. And you know, anyhow, I think that's one thing I will say is it's a little safe, I think for you. And I think you could be a little bit more dangerous and uh, you kind of have to be to break through the noise a little bit too. Well, I think the build in public piece, you could easily, um, you know, take three different copy examples and, and put them out in the open to LinkedIn and, you know, you'd have, A&B tested. have feedback. Mm -hmm. I have, I have been doing it and I've been, um, I've been, uh, so this has been a process of like a, a week, a week and a half. Um, I have been testing it on LinkedIn. This is also part of it. So this is, this is pretty awesome. And this is like stuff that I can actually use I don't know in um, in videos or or just you know have screenshots etc just to show some proof so yeah, yeah and and Amy the the um, absolutely agree that you know I could I could take more I could be more bold with this so absolutely I'm I'm with you I'm with you on this um, the I I like the the play on words with rent the runway but I have two choices here. It's either I do the, the actual runway, which is, you know, the, the runway, the, the, the airport runway, you've got the fashion runway, and then you've got the, the runway, which is, you know, number of months of, um, of staying alive, right? So there's, there's an interesting play. I, I can show you, if I, if I scroll down, uh, if we get to the end, um, I'll show you, you know, the, the idea of, forget the design, okay? <laughs> Of, of the of the runway um okay so the idea is okay here this is this is this the idea here is to give give something for for free so um either you know like the first maybe a, a few a few questions for free that they could just take and use and and start you know um take a couple of uh, customers and and ask those questions and illuminate themselves right and see for themselves like I really want them to see it for for themselves. Um, yeah. So we got this. So this is the problem, and then I'm agitating the problem after this section. Yeah. So this is where I want to show that they're bleeding money, basically. And these are the reasons. These are the reasons why. The only thing that's missing from here is does your because we talked about product market fit. Does your your do they even see value in, in, in what you're selling? Like that's a, that's a that's a big one because there's so much glitter. Um, a glitter is is limited, right? <laughs> in marketing, it doesn't quite it won't fix a, a shitty product. So this so you, <laughs> the, the, this is this is where I think uh, going to Francois's initial point would be really interesting if you had pain points associated with the buyer personas at these ICPs. So you'd want like a page for founders. You'd want a page for like VPs of sales because mm -hmm. their pains are going to be slightly different. So even if you like kind of limit it, make it smaller rather than like guessing is the number one runway killer 
like these are the pains that founders are facing as a result of this, of, as a result of guessing versus here are the pains VPs of sales are facing as a result of guessing. Um, mm -hmm. So here's where I think you could be more specialized and then you could target specifically, you know, which one. Uh, so so can, I, can I add something? Because we talked a lot about video here and I think a story that you have is a very important one to sort of get out there. I would probably make this side, like I would guessing it's the runway, one number one runway killer. Then beneath that, I would have two videos, one for founders and one for VC of sales. And mm -hmm. then you click on the one where you're interested and then you sort of just spec down for them. These are the things that are going to get in your way for finding the perfect product fit so that you can generate revenue at the timeline that you have like on yourself to get done. Uh, I, I would do, I would do videos. Like I think, I think when you are uh, an entrepreneur, like you are, you need to sort of get your story there to generate that emotion that we are trying to talk about here. I think, and sort of, uh, sort of talking about the stressful scenarios that they are going to face and how you can be supporting in that scenario. I don't know if that's an idea that you guys think is good or bad, but I, I would just, I would just talk here. Like see if I can mm -hmm. get them to activate on a video that's just embedded on the site where they can sort of choose based on their role, what they want to listen to. I think that's a pretty, that's a good idea. This would be a good book to pick up too. It's uh, it's called Building a Story Brand. Um, which oh, would yeah. help with kind of like the videos. I don't know if you've read it, but yeah. um, I think it's a good point, Sarah. Like maybe it's a lot of testing. Like it's hard to know. I think we're, we're providing some, all providing some like good ideas and it's hard to know which one of these is going to, to work the best. And I think for you as a net bike, one of the big takeaways should be let's test multiple different things, whether it's like mini videos, whether it's like specific landing pages and then iterate, iterate, and iterate based on what's converting best. And I think, I mean, like I said at the beginning, I, I'm i big on video and I'm, you know, it's gonna be a big part of this because it's, you know, it's me, right? So I'm glad that that's coming up again and again. Uh, that's great. Um, Sarah, what you just said is, you know, Absolutely, you know, after after the above the fold, just go into video and show yourself um, as soon as possible. I was thinking of doing it in the in the next section, which is the problem agitation, because you know I had so much to say. I was like, this is going to be great on video because I can even share my personal experience. But yeah, I get I get the point of putting you know being as personal as possible um, uh, sooner. So so yeah. Yeah, because they're buying you. Like they're basically buying you and your confidence. So you have to sort, because that's what also one of the disqualifications. If they don't like you in the video, they're never going to buy anyway. So let's just off the website. Like I'm big about <laughs> disqualification because that focuses you on the people who are actually going to buy from you and that are going to be clients of yours for a long time because they like you as well as your confidence. That's great. And I also and you work. A, a, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. No, I do work in the video company, so I'm, I'm a bit, 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 bit biased, but still, I think getting you out there as soon as possible is important. Yeah, and, and getting to, to share my, uh, my story, which is, you know, I've been CMO twice, and I almost lost my job because of this. So I get to, like, show, talk about all this um, and how it's affected, you know, what I've decided to, to work in. 100% start with that. That yeah, statement. Yeah, yeah. I've been a CMO awesome. twice, and I've lost. I've almost lost my job because of this problem exactly that I'm about to tell you about. Like that is so powerful. Mm. All right, folks. I know we're up. Uh, we're just a couple minutes yeah. over, um, but this has been super fun. Uh, thanks for for putting yourself on the hot seat, uh, Zineb. Thanks, Jeff, Jacob, Sarah, for uh, making time. Uh, and uh, I'm sure it goes without saying, you're you're welcome to reach out to us individually too for some feedback. I know I've got some ideas rattling around here that I'll I'll be throwing that your way. Um, so I don't know if this will cause more harm than goods in it. Hey, it's up to me, right? I have to, I put myself out there and then I have to decide, you know, what to, what to actually take on, no? So yeah. th Thanks thank you. Else. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Thanks, thank everyone. you guys. Have a good weekend. Bye. Yeah. Best of luck, Zanab. Thank you.